Romeo James Langford, born October 25th, 1999. The issues today's feature faces can really be summed up in one paragraph and also quick glancing at his career on paper. But of course, we'll go a little deeper into the early struggles of the 21-year-old third-year player going into the 21-22 season. Like myself, many have had their eye on Langford since his high school days in Indiana as he was one of the brightest young players in the country. Immediately, you saw how much more advanced he was compared to his competition. But advanced, what does that really mean? If you're that much more advanced than me, so able to finish the test faster, does that mean when the scores come back in, you'll get a better grade? No. In basketball, it's the same thing. At the high school ranks, especially the difference of level from player to player, advancement is at its greatest along the basketball journey. It's hard to give a prospect 100% the amount of faith that he'll turn out to be just as good in college or NBA because of this. Unless his production is accompanied by a few more crucial elements in his bag. You almost see that even this year in the high school ranks with a guy like Mikey Williams. He's so much more hyped and you can even say advanced in a lot of ways than his competition that everyone almost has him pegged to be the next basketball star. He's in my eyes as well. But I see a few things like Langford that may cause him to be a disappointment in the future if they're not quickly addressed. Plays like a shooting guard small forward even at times, how tall is he? Does his body structure tell you his bones have the potential to stretch to fit a position he's sculpting his game to play like? Because imagine a 6'5", 6'8", Mikey Williams. As it is now though, is he really that much better than his competition? Or does the self-promotion and social media hype train make it seem more glorified than it is? This was the exact thinking when watching Romeo Langford in his high school days. Nevertheless, leaving high school, he was rated higher than Zion Williamson, Kobe White, Kevin Porter, and some late to finish the exam, but arrived at the same destination prospects, potentially in a better situation to succeed. He was Mr. Basketball in the Basketball Hub, Indiana, McDonald's All-American, and one-and-done college player selected lottery to the historic Boston Celtics. What more could you ask for, right? So why is Romeo Langford averaging two points in the league? Let's talk about it. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth. Let's get it, man. Romeo Langford is from New Albany, Indiana, now listed at 6'4", and is currently a shooting guard for the Boston Celtics. In high school, Langford began to show his advancement early. Major prep schools became interested in his talent, and as his name grew, he was almost expected to transfer to a powerhouse name, but chose to spend the remainder of his years at his hometown high school. Some believe he could have used a bigger school with better competition and better development opportunities, and maybe he would have hit the ground running a bit sooner. But Langford chose to stay loyal. It worked out because he was able to dominate players at the level and environment he was comfortable at, and it shot him up the rankings. I remember watching his highlights while he was still in high school and feeling the crazy hype around his name. His high school gym would be sold out to watch his games and he put on a show. 30 points and 9 rebounds as a sophomore and led the team to its first state championship since 73. All-American, 4th all-time in Indiana scoring history, Mr. Basketball, and the ability to select the school of his choice to most likely spend less than a year before the big stage. Stunt number one, undersized. Yes, at six foot four, Romeo Langford is an undersized basketball player. It's the first thing I noticed when watching him that may be a problem when he got to the level he's at now. Langford was listed at six foot six. I guess I never really believed that after seeing him with my own eye, but more than that, I could tell by his game style back then, even at 6'6", he may struggle if a few things didn't change. One of those we'll speak about in stunt number two. 
Romeo in high school was a smooth wing player that even brought the ball up at that level and had possession as long as he wanted to make his usual drive to the basket unfazed and finish or get fouled and head to the line which he usually did similar to James Harden's 2019-2020 season in Houston. He rarely took jumpers, although when he did, he didn't miss those either, as confident as he was in his space. I always said his game and demeanor reminded me of Tracy McGrady at that level, but my concern has always been, can he do this against competition just as tall and athletic? When he chose to attend Indiana over schools like Duke, Kansas, and Kentucky, you immediately saw that the play and competition he was used to was just beginning to catch up. Compared to his expectations, believe it or not, Romeo Langford struggled at Indiana. He shot just 27% from three, near one-to-one -one ratio assist to turnover, low 70s from the free throw line, and 44% from the field, playing almost the entire game on a team that was one of the worst in school history. Yet, his numbers were still good enough on paper, and he still had the name developed in high school to garner a lottery team taking him, that team being the crowded Boston Celtics. Now all of a sudden, his height had changed from 6'6 to 6'4 when officially listed. A 6'4 shooting guard without elite ball handling, high level jumper, and near point guard playmaking abilities, I knew it would be an uphill battle and tough role for Romeo. One, he was being set up from the beginning to play. Important to note, he also played through injury at Indiana, tearing a ligament in his thumb, to which he still never missed a game all season. Stunt number two, his demeanor and urgency. The second thing I noticed early in Langford's career was his extra calm demeanor that he got away with in high school that even created more of an intrigue behind his name as it always looked like he had even another level he could take his game. Like everything came too easy. As a scout, this is interesting and sometimes confusing when you see him at a level comparable or above his and you realize there was no higher level. His demeanor and cool nature was just that. That works when you're six foot nine like Tracy McGrady and will always at least have the height advantage, but when you're now not only average height for the position at 6'6", but truly undersized when officially measured at 6'4", you become a small fish in a big NBA pond. Romeo no longer had that allure like he did in high school. His overly poised sense of urgency would have to be sped up on this level as players here were all Mr. Everything as amateurs as well, and most can now dominate you physically. A new world for the high school superstar with game that would have been perfect in the early 2000s. In 2021, with the height and athleticism of today's young athletes, it's instead a growth stunt for Romeo Langford. Stunt number three, the Boston Celtics. In my opinion, Romeo's third growth stunt was him being taken by the Boston Celtics. The last thing you want for an undersized, seemingly introverted basketball player coming into a world of the greatest athletic giants on the planet is for him to be sent to a place that isn't invested in using him early and developing his talents where they perform best which has always been as the center focus of a team. The Boston Celtics in 2019 were the last team you would expect to bring in another wing player with a need-the-ball-in-hands game style like Langford. Already having Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Marcus Smart, Gordon Hayward, not to mention fellow rookies Javante Green and Carson Edwards, the Celtics were overloaded on the wing when thinking of a place Romeo Langford could flourish. Needless to say, he struggled early in Boston, missing most of his rookie season after having wrist surgery and has spent the majority of his time in the G League, where he's also been dealing with nagging injuries. In a glimmer of light, he did have a positive playoff series against Brooklyn in 2021 where he played 27 minutes a game and averaged 9 points and played well on defense. 
Entering year three, this year and the beginning of the next will be crucial for Langford as he must become more of a playmaker for Boston, defender, and pick up his sense of fight for a spot he has now but can easily change and see him beginning a journeyman career really soon. All in all, I'm gonna continue watching his progress. He has a great chance in the position he's in now, but has to increase his sense of urgency, adjust his game to find minutes with this team, and build on last year's playoffs heading into this season. Salute to him, much respect, but for these reasons, his growth is being stunted. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth, and I'm out.